The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown all the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sion. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I wonder if you've ever experienced something that in our phraseology we say turned on a dime. Turned on a dime. Everything was going along swimmingly, and then all of a sudden, just like that, something changed. What was going along swimmingly and beautifully and wonderfully changed in an instant, was turned upside down in the other direction, and all was not right with the world. Here we have the story of Jesus who goes to the synagogue, and he begins to read the scroll that is handed to him. He finds that passage in Isaiah, and he says, after he reads it, puts it away, sits down with them to teach and says, today, this passage, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. What an audacious thing for Jesus to say. And all of them are very happy and excited. They're all fixed on him. They want to hear what he has to say. And he begins to explain to them that God is with them, but God hasn't always done what they expected. God only cured one leper. God went to the widow when people were starving. He's pointing out to them ways in which those that they despised the most were chosen by God to bring healing, to bring health, to bring food and abundance. That God chose the most unlikely people in God's story, in their history, to bring forth God's will. And then they turned on him. They turned on him with rage, the scripture tells us, and they drove him out of town. They drove him to the point at which they were ready to throw him off a cliff because they didn't like what he had to say. They were fearful. He said things to them that they would not believe. That people who were outcasts were the ones that God had chosen. 
And in an instant, they went from being enamored and fixed on him to being enraged and ready to kill him. As I thought about this passage and wondered how to speak to our reality of our world today, I wondered what if those who were listening to Jesus in the synagogue had guns? What if they had guns, like the image of the people we have seen who are on the state house steps with their rifles strapped over their shoulders face to face with the people who are sworn to protect and defend their country and their community? What if the people in Jesus' time were so enraged they took guns out with them to the cliff? I know they didn't have guns at the time, but Think of this as it were to happen possibly today. Would someone have shot Jesus? Or would they, like what we've been recently hearing about, even though it happened in February, would they hunt down an innocent man who was jogging, enjoying the beauty of a day? hunt him down from the bed of a truck and shoot him because of the color of his skin. My friends, we have in this country a problem with race. And we have a problem with guns. And we as Christians have to face up to our complicitness. Even if we don't own guns and even if we feel like we don't have any racial bias in us, we are a part of a society that allows for this kind of violence to happen. We are supposed to be people of peace, people who protect and care for our neighbors, regardless of their faith, regardless of the color of their skin, regardless of their sexual orientation, regardless of their age, regardless of their gender, regardless of anything that makes them a human in divine image of God. It's a tall order for us, my friends, Would we be like those in the synagogue who were one, at one time admiring Jesus and in the next breath threatened by him, threatened by his words and the things that he had to say so that we would join the crowd and try to throw him off the cliff? I can't tell you if I would be one of the crowd. I don't know. But I, my friends, am searching my heart to find out really where I have stumbling blocks, where I might not and need to change my ways to speak up, to speak up for innocent children and adults and people who are being subjected to violence, being subjected to hatred, being subjected to being other. In this time where we have a lot of time to think, I implore all of us to think of ways that we might find those places in our lives that we need to repent about, we need to ask forgiveness about. But more than that, we need to act we need to act on behalf of people who are being victimized and villainized and murdered just because the color of their skin. There are plenty of organizations that we can be part of. I won't go through the list right now, but find them, sign their petitions, speak up. We need to stand together 
to bring peace, to share the love of God, and to make sure that everyone knows that we, as Christians, stand for those who are on the margins, those who are outcast, those who are in fear of their lives, and those who need us to help them see God's image in themselves and in everyone whom they encounter. Amen.